Hello everybody. I want to share with you a very deep and profound and very inspiring Sfas Emes. It's maybe a little longer than I usually speak, but I think this is so exciting, so inspiring that I really want to share with you. So if you're afraid of a few extra minutes, you can turn off now. <clears throat> this Easter portion discusses how Yaakov went out, Vayetze, he went out, he left Israel to run away from Yaakov, and he basically went into exile. And uh, the Torah says, and he reached the place. He reached the place. So Rashi writes over there <clears throat> two things, fascinating things. Rashi writes, what does it mean he reached the place? One, it says, means, doesn't just mean he reached, means he prayed in the place. And Rashi writes that he was Masakin Tfilas Arvis. He was Masakin, he established the evening prayer. Now the word Masakin also means to fix. And the word the word phrase really means he fixed. He really, he fixed the prayer of mixture of confusion. Okay, but 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 Rashi writes that he established the prayer of Mariv, Tfilas Arvis. <clears throat> but then Rashi continues and says, why does it say Vayifka? I should say Vayispala. Why does it say he reached? It should say he prayed there. So Rashi writes another thing. This teaches us Shekhaft Salaharetz, that the area of the Mokam HaMikdash, the area of the Holy Temple, jumped to him. I say to say, basically he was, Yaakov was in a place called Luz, was in a place that wasn't holy, and all of a sudden, miraculously, the area, the land of the, of the base of English jumped to him, and he was suddenly in the area of the Makkah of English. So this is a fasc fascinating concept. So number one, number one, why is the same verse that teaches us this miracle that the land jumped, why is the same verse, the same word, why is it the source of, of Yaakov establishing the, the Arvis prayer? Question number one. Question number two. What exactly does it mean that he that the land jumped? What lesson are say are is teaching? What is that supposed to mean? Why did this miracle occur? Um, <clears throat> okay. So there's a lot more to talk about, but let's jump right in. So why do we have three prayers? Why do we have three prayers? So what's a prayer? A prayer. A prayer is an opportunity to turn to Hashem and create what's called an ace ratzon. Create a time of love. When we pray, we pray, we create a time of love. Hashem is this love towards us and showers us with love. Our, our ancestors, our forefathers, Av, Mitz, and Yaakov, they were people who devoted their lives to, 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 to creating Hashem's love, Hashem's Ratzah. And for each of these three, three forefathers, they created windows, windows of Esra, and they created windows of, of divine love. Avram, with his great deeds, he created the window of Shachris. Yitzchak, with his great deeds, he created the window of Mincha. And Yaakov, with his great deeds, he created the window of Marv. This is what it means that, that, that those three forefathers established our prayers. It doesn't have to mean that they made the words of prayer, but that they created these windows, these eight ruts, and these times of divine love uh, during the day. <clears throat> now, our forefathers didn't just create these windows of divine love, but in a, in a deeper sense, their great actions were the merits, were the merit of each of the three temples. Avon was the merit of the first holy temple, Yitzhak was the merit of the second, and Yaakov was the merit of the third. But even more than that, more than simply creating the merit of having those future temples, they actually, this divine love, actually draw forth the energy of those future temples. So therefore, the Shachris time draws into the world the divine energy of the first space of Mikdash. This uh, Mincha time draws forth into the world the energy of the second base of Mikdash. And Marav time draws forth into the world the energy of the, of the last piece of English, meaning those energies are these, this enormous holiness that creates this divine love, and then the, that brings down this, this hashpa, this spiritual energy, the uh, blessings into the world. Right, so therefore Avram connected us to the first temple, Yitzhak to the second, and Yaakov to the third. Now, we find the Mara of a fascinating thing. Mara of our state is there's no, there's no time. Meaning, chakras you have to dive in by a certain time. Middle you have to dive in by a certain time. Myrus are say to say, ain't lo kavad. There's no set time. Why is that? Why do we have this fascinating uh, uniqueness? That's because they're connected to the temples. The first temple had a set time. The set time, there was, it was a specific point in history, right? <clears throat> and therefore, Avram knew when it would be, right? Therefore, when he draws the energy of the first temple, there was a, that energy has a set time. Yitzhak also, the second temple had a set time. It was, it was a specific duration. Uh, and therefore, when Yitzhak draws the energy of the second temple, it had a set time. But, but the third temple, third temple, we've been waiting for 2,000 years for. That time frame is variable based on, it's based on 
our deeds and or it's based on uh, when Hashem wants to bring the bring the, the ultimate redemption. Therefore, that has no kava, no set time. And therefore, Yaakov, when Yaakov drew forth the energy of Marev, it had no set time, no set time. It's variable. Now, why is it called Arvis? Why is it called dark? Because the the, the why is it called Arvis? It should be called Laila. See, the first the first two prayers were relatively simple. It was relatively easy to bring forth energy because they were they were in a specific time a specific location, a, a specific um, zone, so to speak. But, but the third one, so to speak, totally mixed up and, and, and clouded over in this long exile. It, it wasn't clear where it was. You needed a great person, you needed an enormously great person to be able to draw forth that energy. Yaakov, who was, was the, the energy of Torah, the, the, the enormous, uh, enormous power of Torah. Avon was the power of kindness. Yitzhak was the power of judgment. But Yaakov was the power of Torah. Torah has this enormous power, enormous power to be able to find the inner makom, the, in, the inner place, the place, the source of holiness. That's what Torah has. And this is what I say to say. She'en lecha davar she'en lo makom. A davar, you have no thing that has no makom. What does that mean exactly? So what that means is, it says that, so I miss, there's no word of Torah. When you study Torah and you learn it with the proper intention, you learn the Shema, it can allow you to connect to the Makom, to the source of all things. And therefore Yaakov, who was Torah, he was able to reach the Makom, the source of holiness. And therefore, what was that Makom? What was that source? What was the vehicle Makom? He reached that Makom. That Makom was the Makom HaMikdash, the, the area of the base of Mikdash. So therefore, when it says that Yaakov reached the place, Right? It doesn't just mean he reached that place. It means that he was able to access the place of the Makom HaMikdash, of that third temple. He's able to draw forth that energy into our world. Right? He's able to connect the Jewish people to that future. Right? And therefore, and therefore, um, when it says that, he, that the area jumped, it means that he was able to leap and connect Kala Yisrael to that Makom HaMikdash. Even though it was it was all mixed up into the darkness of exile. He was able to connect, connect us to that makom. That's why the same verse that says Vayikim makom, he reached the place. That's the verse that says that he established Marev, right? Because what is Marev? Marev is the ability to reach that place. Isn't that amazing? So therefore, when when Yaakov was able to, with his power of Torah, was able to connect us to the makom amigdash, he was able to connect, draw forth that holy temple into into our world. That was establishing Marev. That was establishing the prayer of Marev. But even more than that, that was bringing light, bringing this light into the darkness. <clears throat> that was that was being that was misake in Marev. He was he was fixing this confusion. Now Yaakov, his whole essence, Yaakov, his whole essence was about bringing light to dark places. Yaakov was well, our status. They was trying to pave the way for for the future, pave the way for the a future sons. Therefore, <clears throat> this is what it means. That it says when he when he went to Luz, it says, "Achin, I didn't know that this is a, this is Hashem is here." Now, why didn't he know? He didn't know because because that wasn't a holy place. Indeed, it wasn't. He brought it there. Now, our sages teach the Medrash, the Medrash teaches <clears throat> that in the famous dream that Yaakov had of going up the ladder, the Medrash says that Yaakov had was given a choice. If you come up the ladder, all exiles will be done. He was given the choice, come up the ladder and there'll be no exile for the Jewish people. And Yaakov says, I'd rather not. Yaakov chose to stay in darkness. He chose to stay, why, why is that? Because he knew by him staying in darkness, he will be able to bring, he, he will give the, the ability to the Jewish people to bring light to all dark places in the future, to bring light to, to, to a dark humanity in the future. By him choosing to stay in a dark place, he was given the ability for the Jewish people to bring light to all dark places. Now, how did Yaakov have this, have this gall to willingly choose to go into these dark places? How did he have that confidence? You know why? Because Yaakov himself was a source of light. He himself was a source of light. Why? What does that mean? So, our sages say the following fascinating thing. Our sages say, a person who has ma'ane gets a Shabbos, a person who gets pleasure from Shabbos, He's given the, the gift, the Nachla, he's given the gift of Yaakov, of, of Nachla B'li Mitzarim, a gift, of, of, um, an inheritance without any limits, without any, any Tzaras. So we see from here, Yaakov is associated with Shabbos, 
with, with having pleasure on Shabbos, and associated with something called, that, a gift without any limits. Why is Yaakov connected to the to Shabbos and to no Mitzrayim? What is this supposed to mean? What is our state is saying? They're saying a deep idea that Yaakov, as we'll explain, Yaakov was, was the, the light of Shabbos. Shabbos is this enormous light. That's why we light the Shabbos candles. Yaakov was a source of light. And, he, and how do we see that Shabbos is a light? We find that in all the days of creation, it says, if I ever broke it, there was, there was evening and there was morning. But by Shabbos, it doesn't say there was evening and morning because there's no evening at all by Shabbos. There's no light by Shabbos. There's no darkness by Shabbos. Shabbos is pure light. Shabbos is pure light. And that's the reason why the light of Shabbos, many mitzvot only have light during the day. Tzfilin, for example, only brings us energy during the day. But Shabbos... Has, has energy both day and night. Shabbos, has no, has, so to speak, has no darkness. Therefore, Yaakov, who was Shabbos, was able to go into dark places and bring light into those places. Now, how did he become like Shabbos? You know why? Because he was Masakin Marv, because he established Marv. The ability to create Marv created the ability to be Shabbos. What is that supposed to mean? Listen to this fascinating concept. <clears throat> Marv... Night symbolizes darkness, a dark place, um, confusion, and difficulty. When a person is in a time of difficulty, A, it's difficult to pray. It's difficult to pray. And B, even if a person does pray, it's not, perhaps not a real prayer. You're focusing on yourself. You're praying for your own needs. In a certain sense, a person can't, can't pray at night. You can't pray during dark times. But Yaakov was massacring the Arvis. He established that, no, we could, you could pray at night. That even, even when things are difficult, we could focus, we could grab ourselves, right, by our horns, so to speak, and focus and connect to Hashem. And therefore, even when we're praying for our own needs, that's still connecting to God. So Yaakov, what he, Masakin, he fixed, he fixed the prayer of Marev, right, by making Marev a time that we could still connect. Even when, when it's difficult, even when it, it's, it's uh, easy to be distracted, we can still connect to Hashem. So now, <clears throat> Marev, which is about not focusing on your difficulty and focusing only on your relation with Hashem, that's exactly the idea of Shabbos. Why is that? Our say to say, what's Shabbos? Shabbos is supposed to be where, where it, you come to Shabbos and it's, it's as if all your work is done. All your work should be done. Our say to say, when you come to Shabbos, it should be as if all your work is done. You forget all the difficulties of the week, all the work of the week, right? Therefore, that's what it means. A person who has owning on Shabbos, a person who has joy on Shabbos, he has a gift of no mitzvah. Basically, Shabbos is it's only Shabbos. It's only my relationship with Hashem. I forget about everything else. Therefore, the ability for, for Yaakov to daven marav and his ability to bequeath that to the Jewish people, to daven marav, to focus on Hashem, even and putting away all, all the difficulty, that was creating this light of Shabbos. Right? And therefore, marav created this light. And therefore, and therefore, that light allowed Yaakov to go into these dark places. Right? He has this enormous light. He brought holiness to every dark place. And he paved the way for the Jewish people. And that, 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 and that allowed him, that allowed him to indeed connect that light of Mar, that light of Shabbos, that allowed him to connect to the future, based on English, the Makom, the, the future, and the, to draw forth that light in here. Bottom line, right, is that the, the idea of Mar, of being able to put aside a person's difficulties and connect to Hashem, is the idea of Shabbos, which is the ability to put away our difficulties and connect to Hashem. And that's, that draws into us, right, the Makom, the, the light of the future the light of the, the future world, the light of, of the, the time of Yom Shikul Shabbos when there's it's only Shabbos. Therefore, <clears throat> that is why Marev is, has this fascinating um, concept that, that um, it's Rishus. I stay to say that the other prayers are obligatory, but Marev is, is optional, so to speak. Now, what does that mean? Really, it's not optional. What it means is, is that the other, <clears throat> it means that just as Yaakov, he chose to go into a dark place on his own in order to bring light, so to speak, we also, we choose purposely to go into the night to bring light into the darkness. Therefore, just as Yaakov going into the night brought light to darkness, when we go into Marev and we pray Marev, we're also bringing light to the darkness. And we do it willingly. We do it with Rishus. Not obligated, but we do it willingly because we, we choose, like Yaakov, to bring light to holy places. <clears throat> So in short, we spoke about the enormous energy that comes to us, that comes to us um, from every prayer, Shachas Mechamarev. And when we pray within the right times, we draw forth the energy of the, the future based on Mik Bati Mikdashas, the future temples. We spoke about the, the enormous power of Marev, of being able to put away our difficulty and focus on our relationship with Hashem. We 
We spoke about the enormous power of Shabbos being this enormous light that connects us to the future. And, and we spoke about, we, and we spoke about the idea of Rishus, that we choose to go into the darkness to bring light into this dark world. Let us all absorb these beautiful messages. Let us absorb this message of our mission to bring light into the mire, bring light into the darkness, and let us indeed fill this world with the amazing light of Torah and holiness and goodness and kindness and spirituality and, and, um, and Kedusha. And let us, let us indeed have a beautiful, holy Shabbos. Take good care.